morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Lauren. I am our senior project manager here at Petsies and Stuffed Animal Pros and Budsies. Um, I also own Monkeys in Wonderland and Wonderland Animal Training. I am an animal trainer who works with private clients and public organizations across the country, as well as in my home state of Tennessee, helping people to have well-behaved monkeys and other companion animals, everything from primates to I've worked with panthers and leopards and your domestic dogs, cats, and pets like ferrets, rats, you name it, I'll work with it. Um, so we're here today with my capuchin monkeys. Uh, we have Emerson Alexander to my left and Willow Renee Marie to my right. And back in the cage behind us, we have Noah James. Um, Emerson, kiss, kiss, kiss. So the monkeys know a lot of different tricks and commands. Uh, Emerson loves to give kisses, as you can see. Can I have another kiss? Oh, good boy. He loves to give kisses. Willow Renee Marie, right here. So we're going to tell you a little bit about monkeys. Uh, these guys are Brazilian tufted capuchin monkeys. Now, capuchin monkeys are native to South America, the jungles of South America. Brazilian tufted capuchin monkeys are native specifically to Brazil. Um, they would be found in the forests there. Uh, they usually live in groups of 10 to 35 animals with an alpha female and an alpha male leading the troop. Um, in the wild, their diet would consist of fruits, uh, insects, small birds, leaves, frogs, nuts, all sorts of little things that they can get their hands on. One of their favorite activities in the wild is actually to go fishing for minnows and other small fish that they can easily catch. They'll also use rocks to go ahead and break open nuts and seeds so that they can get the contents inside. Capuchin monkeys are incredibly smart. Now in the wild, even though they eat a lot of fruit, the fruit in the wild that they get is usually out of season. It's not super ripe, so it's going to be lower in sugar. Now in captivity, we have to be very careful about what they eat. Uh, capuchins are very susceptible to liver and kidney problems, as well as blood sugar issues like diabetes. Uh, so the fruit that we have here in captivity in the stores is not as low in sugar as the stuff that you would get in the wild. Um, so you want to make sure in captivity when you're feeding them that you're giving them um, mostly vegetables, lean proteins, and uh, seeds, nuts, and other things that are um, much healthier for them. In the wild, those fruits, like I said, are going to be lower in sugar because they're grown out of season when they're eating them. Um, and it's much healthier for them. But in captivity, the, the stores are growing artificially um, produced a lot of the times fruits that are loaded with sugars to make them tastier for people so that they want to eat them. Um, so we can't give that to them in captivity. We actually have multitudes of health issues going on within our troop, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. So as far as capuchins and their social structure, that's the other point I wanted to talk on, uh, they're very social animals, as you can see by them grooming me and loving on me the entire time we're doing this broadcast. Um, they will groom on each other. They'll love on each other. They're, they're very social. And um, because of that, they live in that troop. They have many monkeys around them in the wild that would groom them, would love on them, um, would help them forage, that are a big part of their family. So in captivity, it's super important that they have a companion or multiple to hang out with and interact with. Um, we have three, so they, we have two boys and a girl, so they always have somebody to interact with and, and play with. Right, Emerson? So we're going to show you a couple of tricks that Emerson knows. He's our superstar monkey. He loves doing tricks. His favorite treats for doing tricks are blueberries. We have some blueberries here we'll reward him with. You can see he wants one already. Oh, good boy, but I didn't ask you for a kiss. <laughs> So one of his favorite tricks is putting his money away in his piggy bank. He's actually saving up for a little brother. So we're going to ask Emerson to put his money in his piggy bank. Can you take your money? Can you put it in the piggy bank? Put it in the piggy bank. That was good. But put this one in the piggy bank. Put it away. Oh, good boy. Can you put one more in the piggy bank? Put it in the piggy bank. He's like, I got to finish my blueberry first. Oh, good boy. That's not enough money. We need more money for your brother. Put it in the piggy bank. Yes, good boy. Good boy, Emerson. So he's counting up his pennies and his nickels and hoping to get a baby brother when he saves up enough money. 
Uh, so that's one of the tricks he knows. Some of the other tricks he knows, which you've seen kind of a little bit throughout the broadcast, is he'll give kisses. Emerson, can I have a kiss? Oh, can I have one more? Oh, so good. Good boy. Willow is our lazy monkey, so she doesn't like to do a lot of physical activity. She's often found lounging on her hammock, chowing down on monkey biscuits and other fresh veggies and good food, and watching some cartoons on the TV that they have in their room. She's a lazy girl. Uh, it's very hard to motivate her as much as she loves food. She doesn't like working for food. And she's, she's smart. She knows, she has us trained, that she doesn't have to work for food here. Her food is given to her. And we do encourage them to forage. They have different things that will encourage them to forage for their food. So we'll give them, you know, paper towel rolls with paper towels with stuff inside with nuts hidden in there. Um, we'll give them boxes that are taped shut with food in there to help them forage and, and get that food um, out so that they have something to work on. Um, we'll have different foraging devices set up throughout the cage with different stuff in it so that we can um, encourage them to forage that way. So they are constantly working for their food, but Chica doesn't like to train. She doesn't like to do tricks for food. One trick she knows, just one, is give me your hand. Good girl, good hands. That's the only trick she knows. Emerson, can I have your hand? Oh, good boy. Can I have another kiss? Oh, good boy, double trick, sweet boy. So I'll tell you a little bit about our monkeys. Emerson Alexander, got my lefts and rights mixed up. Emerson Alexander is a four-year-old capuchin monkey male. Uh, he came to me January 9th of 2016. He was actually born on my 21st birthday, which is how he ended up coming home with me. Uh, Emerson was purchased from a breeder as a baby. I worked for that breeder for about three years and absolutely fell in love with capuchin. So when he was born and it being my birthday, I had to have him. Um, Emerson is not a rescue. Like I said, he was purchased. However, he was born with a very rare autoimmune disease called simian papillomavirus. So what that is, is it makes Emerson's immune system very weak. Um, common colds, flus, anything, any illness, ailment that you can get, he can get as well. So we have to be very careful and protective of him if we're sick. People in my house that are sick are not allowed to handle him or be around him because all it takes is somebody else having a cold or a flu and passing it on to him and he gets very, very sick. So we're very cautious about who's around him and who we allow in our home uh, because we have to do our best to protect Emerson with his fragile little immune system. Uh, so that's a little bit about M. Willow over here is a six-year-old capuchin female. She is a rehome. So she came to us from an owner who could no longer care for her. Her owner was an Olympic horseback rider, actually, and she traveled across the world competing on horses, uh, which is super cool. But when she started traveling more, she realized that she was not able to give Willow the time and attention that she deserved. Um, so she wanted to find a home that was experienced in caring for monkeys that could give her a wonderful rest of her life. Um, so she reached out to us and Emerson and me, and um, we decided to go ahead and take her into our home on a foster basis. Um, we had her for about three months before we went ahead and decided that she was really adjusting well to life with us and her and Emerson were really becoming best friends. So we went ahead and signed the adoption papers and made the decision to bring her into our home on a permanent basis. And she's been here a little over two years now and she's absolutely wonderful. Now Willow is the perfect example of what happens when a capuchin monkey gets too much sugar in captivity. Uh, like all of us, when we're new pet owners, we often make mistakes. We don't know necessarily what the best diets are for our babies. Um, and I know, like myself and I know others, have made mistakes when we first bring a pet home. It's only natural. There's a learning curve. So we start out feeding them what we believe is the best diet. But as time goes on, that's going to change as we learn more about the animals that we work with. So although her owner had the best of intentions, Willow did get a little bit too much sugar in her diet as a, as a younger monkey. And as a result, she is diabetic. So she only knows one trick, which is to give me her hand, but that trick actually comes in handy with her and her lifestyle um, because we have to check her blood sugar four times a day. And we do that by asking her to give us her hand. Can I, wrong monkey, can I have your hand? Good girl. And we have a blood sugar meter. So like with people, you would prick her little finger, take a little drop of blood, run it through the meter and get her numbers. When she came to us, her blood sugar was over 600. The veterinarian said that within six months, she would have been in a diabetic coma. To give you an idea, normal capuchin blood sugar should be 120 or less. 
Um, she is on an oral medication now called metformin, which is compounded and we give it by mouth once or twice a day, every day. Um, and that medication helps to regulate her blood sugar levels. So we've gotten her in a normal range right around hundred where she should be. Um, but it's taken a very long time to get her there. Diabetes is something that's very hard on both people and animals and can take a long amount of time to regulate and really work its way through the system um, so that they can live normal, happy, healthy lives. We hope that she will be with us for a very long time. She's only six, like I said, in captivity, capuchins are living 45 to 50 years, which is surpassing the 30 to 35 years that they would normally live in the wild. And that's thanks to the wonderful work of sanctuaries, rescues, and private owners who are going above and beyond to really provide these guys with the best possible lives that we can while they're living with us in captivity in our homes. So behind us, you'll notice we have a third monkey monkeying around in his cage somewhere. And that is Noah James. Noah came to us in October of 2019. He is also a rehome. Now, Noah is a very special case. He'd actually been in four separate homes before he came to us. He was originally rehomed due to biting. Um, he had bitten his first owner and she became scared of him and decided to go ahead and place him. He was then placed with a sanctuary um, who placed him with one owner and then finally into another owner's home. His last owner's home was, his last owner was absolutely wonderful. Um, unfortunately, she came down with cancer and her immune system became very compromised so she could not care for him properly. It was very dangerous for her to actually be around the monkeys and be working with them hands-on. So she decided to go ahead and rehome Noah. Um, Noah had also had some issues with her husband um, and was displaying aggression towards him specifically, which had made him dangerous to work with, uh, with the husband in the house. So when Noah came to me, I got a phone call from a rescue in Florida, one of my good friends, and she told me she had a six-year-old capuchin male who needed a home. And once I heard that he had been in four separate homes, I couldn't turn him down. I needed to have him. I knew that. Um, and we went ahead and drove 14 hours round trip to pick up Noah and bring him home. Um, and Noah's been a project. He has definitely been a hard monkey to work with. When he first came home, I was the victim of one of his bites, which you can see on my hands here. I've got like a nice three inch long uh, scar across my hand from where Noah got me when he first came home. Um, we have had him, like I said, since October of 2019, and it's taken about six full months to get him to the point that we could handle him and work with him comfortably. I think a lot of that has to do with these guys right here. They are incredibly sweet, incredibly loving. Willow here is who I call mama monkey. She loves the other monkeys. She loves grooming on them. She loves kissing them, um, giving them hugs, making sure everybody's kind of okay, always looking after the other monkeys. So I think she's really helped Noah to kind of settle in and realize that life here is not so bad and he's finally found his forever home. When you have an animal that you're working with that has been through so much and has been through so many homes, it's going to take a lot of time to work with them and reassure them and train them to the point that they know they're not going anywhere else. This is their forever home and they're safe here. And Noah's finally letting his guard down and being okay with that. So we're really happy about that. Um, Noah is now one of the sweetest monkeys. He's let his guard down to the point where his real personality is starting to come out. He's just a sweet, gentle monkey. He loves curling up in bed with me and my boyfriend and giving us kisses before bed and watching TV with us. He's a really good boy. Really good boy. Yeah, you can see Noah right there. Noah, you come and say hi. Hi, Bobby. Hi. <laughs> And like I said, Willow is the mama monkey of the troop. And Emerson over here is the baby. He is, like I said, only four, being the youngest member of our troop. Um, so he is definitely the baby monkey, and he knows it. Emerson is spoiled rotten. He knows that mommy waits on his every desire, every want and need. Anything Emerson wants, he gets. Because he's my baby, and I raised him from the time he was tiny, tiny. So he has a very strong relationship with me. Um, so we'll go over some other tricks that they know, just to kind of keep things interesting in here. Emerson, do you want to shake hands? Good boy. Do you want to shake hands? Good boy. We got to get you a mini bottle of hand sanitizer with what's going on around here. Can mommy have another kiss? Give me a kiss. Emerson, give me a kiss. Can I have a kiss? Oh, so sweet. We'll let him eat that. My cat has decided to join the broadcast as well, in case anyone was wondering. 
Um, <laughs> so we're just having a full on monkey animal party here. Monkey um, animal party. Emerson loves kitties. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you because I know that um, you do have a Pepsi of Emerson as well. I was wondering if you wanted to show that off and talk a little bit about um, working with Pepsi's, you know, to get that that made, you know? Yeah, definitely. So we have Emerson Jr., uh, who I have right here. You can see Emerson reaching for his Pepsi. He loves his Pepsi. Uh, so the team at Pepsi surprised me with this Emerson lookalike when I first joined the team. And we couldn't love it more. It is like the perfect representation of our little Emerson. They look a lot alike from the little white beard around the face to the little tufts of hair on the ears. Uh, they really did a wonderful job of capturing Emerson perfectly. And uh, you can you can see it's a good, not it's a little bit bigger than him, but it's a pretty good life-size representation of M. And we're really happy and excited to be able to have it in our home. And you can see the monkeys love it. They love kissing on it. And they kind of think it's it's another monkey. They really, they think it's real. They're trying to groom it and everything. Like, I think that's crazy. It's so realistic. Yep. So. Awesome, cool. awesome. Really cool. You can't All right. Do, do, you have, do you have anything else that you would like to go over on our wonderful virtual field trip? I showed you guys some of their tricks. We went over a little bit of monkey facts. Um, another trick that Emerson knows, high five. Yep, good boy. Well, do you want more high five? Yeah, good boy. And let's end that with a kiss. Let's do one more kiss since that's our favorite trick. You wanna give me a hand? Good girl. Emerson, can I have a kiss? Oh, sweet boy. So that's about it. Just wanted to go over some tricks with you guys, teach you some fun facts about capuchins. If anybody has any questions about the monkeys or about what I do, feel free to drop it in the box, uh, the comment box, and we'll go ahead and get those answered. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Budsies and Pessies for having us and letting us talk about our wonderful monkeys uh, and all of what we do. If you guys want to learn more about the monkeys, more about what I do, go ahead and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We have two separate accounts. One of them is Monkeys in Wonderland, and the other one is gonna be Wonderland Animal Training. And that's our training page. So you can see all sorts of fun tips and tricks for training your pets, uh, whether they be dogs, cats, monkeys, you name it. And you can also follow a lot of their adventures and see what we're up to with our monkeys uh, here at Wonderland Animal Training. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure uh, to see the monkeys and to get to, you know, talk with you and, and share this with our viewers. So I want to thank you personally for joining us.